This is Tessa, welcoming you to the 1320th edition of the Enfield Talking newspaper, dateline the 21st of June 2001. The readers this week are Mabel, Lillian, Beverly and myself with Barry on the controls. Local stories include How a Lizard Changed into an Alligator, Dog Owners Issued Free Bags, Meeting on Enfield's Budget, The News of a 90-Year-Old Student, and Are You a Bed Tester? And over to Mabel for the first item. The dedication of five people from the local area has been recognised in the Queen's Birthday Honours List. At the age of 80, Joanna Ryden from Clarendon Road in Chestnut has been honoured for voluntary work at Chase Farm Hospital where she helps run the League of Friends. Now, Joanna, we all know her as JR, is also well known to us and we can add to her list of good deeds. She is the lady who registers the postal packets for your weekly tapes, changes the labels and ensures you all receive them regularly. She has been doing this every Friday evening for many, many years, so we are all delighted with the honour given to her. Many thanks from us all, Joanna. Joanna discovered that she had received an MBE at the hospital's fundraising fete on Saturday and said, To be truthful, I was gobsmacked. I didn't know anything about it and people kept coming up to me telling me I'd been honoured. I did have a letter saying I was being considered, but I didn't pay a lot of attention to it. There are a lot of people who do far more than I do. As well as her work for the League of Friends, Mrs Ryden keeps busy delivering meals on wheels to people in Broxbourne. I had a very good career in education, she added. I always thought that when I retired I would put something back into the community. Also rewarded is Arnold Zimmerman from Windmill Gardens in Enfield, who received an MBE for his work in education. At the age of 88, he still organises courses for foreign lecturers in London and provides books and equipment for primary schools in Waltham Forest. He said, You have got to have something to do when you retire to get out of your bed, so I keep going. My family have reacted very well to my MBE, but I shall not celebrate until I have actually got it. Also receiving an MBE is Valerie Felstead, who lives in Enfield, and has been recognised for her work with the guides in Barnet. May Warren, who lives in Enfield, was also honoured for her volunteer work at Barnet Hospital. Edward Milbourne from Warwick Drive in Chesant, who works for the bus company Arriva, has been awarded an MBE for his services to the industry. The 60-year-old will retire in August from a career on the buses which began in 1957. He said, I I think it's a great honour and I'm very pleased about it. It really was a major surprise to me and I'm looking forward to going to receive it with my family. Mr Milburn, who followed his father into the bus industry, is in charge of maintaining 1,300 of arrivers' buses in London. He said it was a good job to do, and I have never regretted any of it. Enfield's Wildlife Rescue and Ambulance Service has taken over the running of Enfield Council's Pets Corner, next to the charity's base at Trent Park in Cock Foster's. Barry and June Smitherman were given a piece of land in the park by the council last year as a base for their work in rescuing sick and injured wild animals. The adjacent children's animal area in the park was also handed over to the WRAS on Monday. A council spokesman said that handing over Pets Corner to the WRAS fitted in with the council's budget strategy. The WRAS, which must now find money to also run the extra area, received a welcome financial boost on Saturday when the advertiser teamed up with UCI Cinemas to host a charity premiere screening of Hollywood's latest animated film, Shrek. 
advertiser readers flocked to see the film, which completely sold out, raising £483 for the charity, from ticket sales and a further £93 in a raffle. Barry said it's great to receive this money, especially at the moment when funds are slow coming in. It will go towards looking after the animals. You can support the work of WRAS by sending donations, checks made payable to WRAS, to WRAS Appeal, Enfield Advertiser, Third Floor, Refuge House, Riverfront, Enfield, Middlesex, EN13SZ. Troubleshooting Councillor Jeff Rodin is to review Enfield Council's budget process next week. Councillor Rodin, a former council leader, is to examine the 2001-2002 budget set by the authority earlier this year at a special project scrutiny panel meeting on Tuesday at the Civic Centre at 7pm. The council tax was pushed up by 11% this year. The panel will be looking at ways to improve the consultation process and welcomes input from local residents and organisations. Councillor Rodin said, How we consult and involve people on all matters is very important, especially our budget for the coming year. Some very good ideas emerge, such as last year's community debate on the budget, so I hope that people will come with plenty of ideas. Anyone who cannot attend the meeting but wishes to have their say can write to James Kinsella, and that's spelled K-I-N-S-E-L-L-A, D-S-T, P-O Box 50, Civic Centre, Enfield, E-N-1, 3-X-A. A massive investment in Chessant Secondary Schools will lead to the creation of more school places and better facilities for the area's children. In a joint project, £25 million will be spent on expanding the town's four schools, which do not have enough places for Chessant's children, a situation that has led to students being educated outside the area. Hertfordshire County Council, Broxbourne Council and the Diocese of St Albans will be working together on the project. Some of the money has come from government grants and more will come from the sale of five acres of land at Jones Road in Goffs Oak. St Mary's High School in Churchgate, Goffs Grammar School in Goffs Lane and Turnford School in Mill Lane will all be expanded in the next three years. Chessant School in College Road is likely to be expanded at a later date. Ray Shostak, the Director of Children, School and Families at Hertfordshire County Council said... This scheme will solve the problem by ensuring that all children can attend a local secondary school with good facilities and enough capacity. Now we need to discuss these plans with local people and find out their views. Millfield House and Theatre has announced the appointment of its new general manager, Les Miller. Last week, the Independent caught up with Les and found out about the man at the helm of Edmonton's premier entertainments venue. Les, a Londoner, born and bred, has spent most of his life in the entertainment business, which has taken him all over the country. He is a trained actor who worked briefly in TV and radio before eventually moving on to the theatre business. Les was born in West London, and after initial training in in the theatre, he moved into management, and his new job at the Millfield involves organising events and performances. One of Les's first jobs was running a theatre in Stoke, before he moved on to the much-acclaimed Everyman Theatre in Liverpool. He then moved on to the Community Theatre Sorry, he then moved on to the Community Theatre Company in Hackney, where he spent an enjoyable time. Les said, I really enjoyed the diverse culture in Hackney. Working there enabled me not only to work with a multiracial society, but also to gain experience about other cultures. Les then experienced a vast change of scenery, 
moving on to a theatre in Milford Haven, Wales. He then spent some time at the All Change Arts Theatre in Upper Street, Islington, before working on projects in Tunbridge Wells and Blacknell. <coughs> Excuse me. So it can be said that Les does not come to Middlefield lacking in experience. Speaking to him last week, it was clear that Les said has some great ambitious plans to make Millfield one of the most appealing attractions in the borough. He said, My main aim is to bring the house and theatre together as a combination. At the moment, the two are both working well, but as separate venues. My wish is that they combine. I want to put a lot of emphasis on the community here. Obviously, it is our aim to bring top names here, but improving the community arts development scheme and bringing more local talent into the business is just as important. So why, I asked, after working all over Britain, has he chosen Enfield as his latest haunt? I see Enfield as a similar venue to Hackney. I really enjoyed working there because of the ethnicity. Hopefully, here in Enfield, I will also be able to work with a range of people from, their, from a variety of different cultures. He also made it clear that the youth theatre was very important to him. He said it was just a, a crucial thing to develop for the future as to enjoy the present. Les now lives in Crystal Palace with his wife, Lizzie, and two daughters, Catherine, 14, and Lucy, 11. Millfield House and Theatre have recently announced that their pantomime for winter 2001-2 will be Jack and the Beanstalk. The cast has not yet been announced, but the theatre assures us that a host of top acts have already been approached. More details will follow in What's On section when available. Enfield Football Club chairman Tony Lazaru is set to stay at the club. The Independent has discovered that the chairman is to dig deep to bankroll next season's squad. Mr Lazaru indicated his commitment after returning to the club following an end-of-season break and handing manager Tom Loizu a six-figure budget for the season. The move signals the chairman's intentions for the club as the Rebel Fans Group the Enfield Supporters Trust plans to form a breakaway team. The Trust will announce its plans at the end of this week after negotiations to take over the Ease collapse. E Ease boss Mr Loizu has dismissed the prospects of the so-called rival club, set to be called Enfield Town FC, who will play four non-league divisions below the Ryman Premier in the Essex Senior League, he declared there's only one Enfield football club and there will only ever be one Enfield football club. They are as much rivals to us as we are to Tottenham. If Tottenham fans hated Alan Sugar, were they going to make another side up and play in the Spartan League? I can't see it lasting too long. Mr Loizu, who is already putting together his squad for the coming season, urged fans to get behind his team from the start. If they feel they should go and support that other side, that's up to them. Hopefully, we will turn a few heads and start playing attractive football. But Loizu's relationship with sections of fans has not always been rosy, as he revealed this week how he has been subjected to physical and verbal abuse since taking over at the helm in December. He told the Independent, It was right at the start when I first joined the club. I got a little bit of stick. Mr Loizu ran the gauntlet of hate at some matches as fans watched his injury-hit team slide towards relegation, which was avoided in the final weeks of the season. Slowly but surely I felt I won them over, he said. A lot of managers would have jacked it in, but it motivated me. As the new season fast approaches, Mr Loizu is now confident that the E's will have a healthier future, both on and off the field.
A schoolgirl was praised for her courage this week after fighting off an attacker with a pair of scissors after being indecently assaulted on Sunday. The 16-year-old victim had been travelling on the 231 bus along the Great Cambridge Road. She got off the bus at the junction with Church Street, Winchmore Hill, and began to walk into Church Street to catch the W8 bus at approximately 6.20pm. She sensed a man approaching her from behind and began to walk faster. The man then grabbed the girl and pushed her to the ground. The girl then took the scissors from her school bag and stabbed the man in the face. She then ran off to catch her bus. A police spokesman said this week, We are treating this incident extremely seriously. The girl reacted with courage and thankfully saw off her attacker. However, had she not reacted so efficiently, the incident could have been far more serious. Police are now appealing for witnesses to come forward and help in their investigation. The man is described as around 25 years old, of Mediterranean origin, six foot tall, of stocky build with cropped black hair, blue eyes and a deep foreign accent. He was wearing a dark coat, black top and trousers. If anyone has any information, they should call the Edmonton Incident Room on 8345-4441 or Crime Stoppers on 0800-555-1. I'll repeat those two numbers again. The Edmonton Incident Room on 8345-4441 or Crime Stoppers on 0800 treble 5 treble 1. Enfield's older student is a 90, yes, 90, 90-year-old modern technology wizard. Jessie Miller from Palmer's Green was chosen as the borough's oldest learner by Enfield Council's lifelong learning team. Jessie was awarded £100 after completing a six-week computer course at Southgate Old People's Welfare Centre. She said, I like learning new things because I'm nosy. (laughs) I thought to myself, I'll have a go. And it was amazing. The things computers do are fantastic. (laughs) I just want to know who puts those things inside of them. (laughs) However, learning about computers is just one of Jessie's interests. As well as attending a walking club on Mondays, Jessie goes dancing on Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays. Three years ago, she was the victim of a mugging. She said... I remember being whisked off in an ambulance with all the bells going. I'm really quite surprised and pleased with myself. I thought I might be affected, but I haven't been. I feel exhausted after that. (laughs) In a move by Enfield Council to clean up the borough streets, dog owners are being issued with free bags in which to collect dog mess. The council has 25,000 pooper scoop bags to give away to Enfield residents. They are available from the Civic Centre in Silver Street, first stop shops, libraries and from rangers at the borough's parks. The problem is being dealt with head-on because dog mess is a health hazard. Children playing in parks are at risk of picking up a stomach upset if they go, go near the excretia. There is also a more serious risk whereby people can contract a disease which can damage eyesight or even cause blindness. A Palmer's Green charity is calling for new volunteers after one of their workers retired after 15 years. Oxfam in Green Lanes held an emotional leaving party for Tom D'Souza last week, but the store is in desperate need of more staff. Ali Osman, who runs the shop, said, Tom was a great asset to the shop. We are always looking for new volunteers, and in fact, we can only operate because of their goodwill. Our current small number of staff has contributed 82 years between them. If anyone is interested in volunteering, could they please come and see us to do a minimum of four hours per week? Drop in at the shop, at 326 Green Lanes to volunteer your services. 
Visitors to the Royal Gunpowder Mills this weekend will be able to learn more about its history as part of the new tourist attractions guided tours weekend. Some ex-employees of the mills in Waltham Abbey and members of the Royal Gunpowder Mills board will lead walking tours around the site. The tours will focus on the railway which used to run around the site, the natural history of the site and the history of some of the buildings. The activities are part of a busy program of events each weekend, which will include historical reenactments and special children's activities. For more information about this weekend and to obtain a full program of events, call 01992-707-370. That's 01992-707-370. Just as former Enfield Southgate MP Michael Portillo walked into the political spotlight again this week, so his former constituency office in Winchmore Hill has again become the focus of attention. Enfield Council's planning committee was due last night to discuss plans to build a car showroom on the site of Century House, the former headquarters of the Enfield Southgate Conservative Party. Century House was demolished last year and trees on the site were chopped down despite the council working to place preservation orders on them. Southampton-based property company Jambo wants to build a single-storey sales office and a vehicle display area for nearly 40 cars on the site. A similar proposal submitted by the company last year was rejected An appeal against that decision was dismissed by the Department for the Environment, Transport and the Regions the following autumn. Council planners who have received 18 letters of of objection from nearby residents are recommending that the latest proposals are also rejected. Nearly 40 pupils of a special needs school were treated to a day at the Paradise Wildlife Park last Wednesday courtesy of the Edmonton Rotary Club. Youngsters from Westley School in Hazelbury Road, Edmonton, were taken to the animal park in White Stubbs Lane, Broxbourne, on Wednesday as part of an annual event run by Rotary International. The children fed the animals and went on rides as part of the day's fun. The club's past president, John Thorpe, said, seeing those kids enjoy themselves is great. We've looked after Westley School for a number of years because we're local to Edmonton. Those kids don't get these sort of chances all the time. The Westley pupils joined other schools for the Kids Out Day, which has been running for 12 years. Um, A letter in the advertiser from C. Hunt of Enfield expresses the following strong feeling. It's headed in praise of the Enfield. How sad I was to read the latest suggestion for naming Enfield's football team. Mrs S. Burkett advertised her letters June the 6th. Not that I am against the name, but it highlights the fact that many local residents simply do not appreciate the significance of our symbol. The symbol for Enfield is not, as stated, a dragon but is, to quote the civic heraldry of England and Wales, a mythological heraldic creature known as an Enfield, which has the head of a fox, the chest of a hound, the talons of an eagle, the body of a lion, and the hindquarters and tail of a wolf. This superb creature can be found in all its glory outside our civic centre, in either statue form or as part of the crest, by industry ever stronger. But alas, as I look around our borough, I realise that this is almost the only place where it can now be found. Whilst the logo still appears on council letterheads, our community transport and many of the billboards show the new logo, the outline of the borough, complete with a red line. line. Why is this? Surely we would rather maintain this glorious Enfield as our figurehead rather than one that would not look out of place in a child's drawing book. 
we are so very fortunate to share our name with our symbol, that it should be promoted, not hidden. So, let's have no more dragon talk and all praise the Enfield. Bed testers are wanted to examine the comfort of the beds at a hotel which opened in Southgate on Monday. The manager of the innkeeper's lodge in the Green, which opened on Monday, is looking for volunteers to help with a national survey into budget accommodation in which they will be asked to judge bed comfort, security, food and decor. Manager Dean Singer said, When volunteers awake the next morning, they can look forward to our complimentary continental buffet breakfast. Anyone wishing to apply for the one-night-only position should contact Edward White on 020-8447-8022. That's 020-8447-8022. Well, that's a good offer. A teenager from Enfield will soon be heading off for a mystery destination in South America, to spend nearly two months working with children. Miranda Padley of Goat Lane finds out later this week exactly where she'll be going for seven weeks from July. The trip is being organised by Latin Link, a Christian missionary organisation, but Miranda needs to raise £2,000. She said, Since May, we've had stalls at Fates and we've been to car boot sales and my church is also going to sponsor me. She's already raised about £700. The organisation says that because it is a contribution, if you do not raise it all, you can still go. I will be working in the slum areas, she said. When I did geography at school, I thought I would really like to work in that environment. We'll be carrying out building projects and evangelising and working with young people. Miranda says she's nervous because she has yet to meet the other young adventurers she'll be living and travelling with but the waiting will be over in a fortnight when she meets them on an orientation weekend in Sussex. If anybody wants to help Miranda to raise money, they can contact her on 8245-4462. That is 020-8245-4462. The popular Palmer's Green Farmer's Market has just celebrated its first anniversary. The weekly Sunday market held in the car park of Palmer's Green Railway Station has attracted customers from all over the borough in the last 12 months. To coincide with the first anniversary, the market is now selling an even wider selection of goods, including goat's milk ice cream, barbecued burgers and award-winning strawberries. And soon there will be a range of summer produce, including asparagus and broad beans. The market is open from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. every Sunday. Plans for a skateboarding park off the Great Cambridge Road have reached the design stage and could be up and running during the summer holidays. Enfield Council is currently inviting contractors to submit designs and building plans for the park which is to be built on the Church Street tennis courts in Edmonton and will have facilities for skateboarders, BMX bikers and rollerbladers. It is hoped that the park will be completed during the summer. Plans were put in motion after skateboarders presented their case for a skate park in November 1999. Since then, the group of teenagers has met regularly with council officers to contribute their ideas about how the park should look and be run. Well, we've reached the end of side one for this tape. Please stop your machine now, take out the cassette, turn it over and start side two. <laughs> 